Now, this has been a big week in Irish soccer, not just for what happened on the field, but for the retirement from RTE's analysis team of Liam Brady. Liam was one of the greatest players ever to play the game in, for Ireland, but it's more important to say he was one of the greatest players that ever played the game anywhere in the world, as great as any we've seen. John Giles paid him a lovely tribute. Liam, you like this. John said you were... And, and he, quote, a beautiful footballer. And he was, is John, as you know, is, doesn't overdo the kind of hype or the praise. But as an analyst, Liam was fabulous. He came in after John and I and Bill had been doing it for 12 years and he gave it a massive new dimension and a lift and helped it survive for the time it did. And people liked Liam. We loved working with him. And he's uh, left on his own terms, and that announcement was made. And it's a pleasure to welcome him to the stand where he has been with us from the start. Liam, you went out in style as you always do, and I'm sure it was an emotional night for you. I wanted to ask you about the bigger picture. The two games we saw, interestingly, Liam, you probably know that France struggled to beat Greece 1-0 from a Kylian Mbappé penalty in Paris. And that's not at all to excuse our performance uh, against Greece, which I thought was the most... It, it was it was a very, very poor performance, and it caused me to worry. What, what did you think of, of that performance? We haven't had a chance to talk to you yet. Well, it was it was two, two steps backwards, Eamon, wasn't it, really? Yep. You know... Yeah. Uh, after the, after the French display uh, in Dublin, um, uh, we all felt that this is something that we were going to build on. Uh, the team looked uh, confident again. France yes. very nearly got a an equaliser toward the end, and you know everybody was, um, you know, talking positively following that performance that we might go on and have a go at qualifying in this group. Yes. Uh, we all know how difficult it is with France and Netherlands in there. Uh, but I think after the French performance, we thought well, we might be able to give it a go this time. And I think yes. uh, Stephen Kenny has been working with these players the best part of three years. He's in, To his credit, he's introduced a lot of young players. To his credit, he wants to play in an attractive manner, which you know myself and yourself and John would be very, very supportive of. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's a results-driven business, you yes. know, and uh, the f- performance against uh, Greece was very, very poor. It was, yes, uh, you know, they ran all over us, really, and we were quite flattered that it was only 2-1. Yeah, I thought there was a distinct lack of intensity, Liam, and also I thought we completely were outthought tactically. Well, yes, yeah, and, uh, you know, it was pointed out that... Um, Stephen took maybe too much time to change. He probably could have yes. changed the positions of the players on the field to stop Simicast, the left back, getting out. He was doing it time yeah. and time again. But he waited till half time to do that, and the game could have been nearly over yeah. uh, if it wasn't for Gavin Bazunu. You know, so yes. all those, all those were, were quite rightly the questions that uh, Stephen Kenny had to answer. You know, yes. why did it take so long and so forth? So. It really was a disappointing performance against a Greek team that I have to say, because Poye has done a very, very good job. He there. has, yeah. And they're on they're on a level with us, really, aren't they? Yeah, they're about three places behind us in yeah, the world rankings, world standing, which aren't yeah. very reliable. Okay, I know that, but down through the years, you know, we've qualified for the tournaments here and there. So of Greece, they actually won the Euros, I think, in 2004. the Euros. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, but since then, you know, they've been, a, you know, an in and out team, a bit like ourselves. So when we went there and lost so compellingly, yes, uh, I think it, the pressure really, really did come on, on, on top of, uh, Stephen Kenny. Yeah. And Gibraltar, you can't really use Gibraltar as, as a, a benchmark, as a yardstick, yeah. or a benchmark to 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 fight your corner because everybody beats Gibraltar. Uh, 
uh, I, I don't think they've, you know, I think the last time they probably had a one nil was against was against Ireland when we were. When we had to play them on that artificial pitch in Gibraltar, you know, yeah, so, in the in the gale, uh, <laughs> in the storm, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, like what I'm saying is, um, Stephen Kenny's got a lot of things that he deserves credit for, but you know, he's had he's had so many years in the job now, I mean, nearly three years in the job, yeah, that we weren't really expecting to have such a poor performance against Greece and it probably compromises our chances of qualifying for the group uh, and yes. you know that, that that brings enormous pressure doesn't it it does yeah and his contract really is until it, it's up when our fate in this group is decided now if we finish third in the group we get into a kind of playoff situation but that would be the point at which his contract would end and be up for renewal or not, as the case may be. You've made the point, you made it very vigorously, and you've been very honest, uh, as you always have been, that this is the worst group of players. And I agree with you, it, it is, because even when I played, you know, we had great players, Tony Dunn, John Giles, Noel Cantwell. I mean, these were top, top uh, players. And we still thought we were a bad team internationally because it, there were no minnows in those days, Liam, as you know. Yeah, well, it sounds it sounds harsh. It sounds harsh. What I said is the worst team. Perhaps I could have perhaps I could have phrased it much better. Right? Perhaps I could have said the least talented of the teams that I've yes. seen in my lifetime. And I can go back to when you were playing, Eamon. I used to go to Daily Man Park yep. and watch all those guys, yourself included. And we had more talent in the team then, and we had more talent going yes. forward. And we probably had the best, the best level of talent that you ever had in the Irish team was when Jack Charlton was manager, and he had so many really yes. top players to pick from. And um, in 2002, we had a new, a, a, a new load come along. Then we had like Damien Duff, Robbie Keane, Richard Dunn. Um, all these yes. lads, Shea Given, great goalkeeper, all these lads were top, top players as well. But, uh, I suppose from the, the mid, the mid twenties, beginning with Trapattoni, I think Trapp did a really good job trying to, trying to get results with, with a team that was getting old. And he did that to a certain extent. But since then, since 2010, we really haven't had any players come on the no. scene, you know. And, you know, you, all you have to do, I mean, is look at where these kids are playing, you know, who they're playing for. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's all. Yeah. That tells you everything, doesn't it? It tells you everything. Uh, it does. They're not, they're not operating at the, at, you know, most of them are operating mid-table and below in the championship. Yeah. Just looking at what Stephen has, at the underage level, he knows all these guys. He's introduced them to the team, Nathan Collins, for example. Evan Ferguson at 18, you know, is, we'll talk in a moment about him. He looks very exciting and, and a really good player. This young lad, Gavin Pizzunu is superb. I thought he was superb and he's a great disposition about him, but you're quite right. On the whole, we don't have the players at the moment, but we do need to look after our underage teams. We do need to, uh, I'm sure you'll agree, get academies going. We've asked the government for almost 600 million uh, to invest in the game, but we don't have the people who would invest it wisely. And the issue is really, if Stephen were to go right now, who would replace him? And there isn't an obvious candidate unless you have one, do you? Uh, no, I see Lee Carsley's name has been linked to now. Lee has, has yeah, done I, I think pretty, so. pretty, he's pretty, done well. pretty good. Yeah, he's done pretty good things at underage level. I think he, he, he yes. was a coach at Manchester City under the, the regime that they had there, so he would have learned an awful lot. But even it, Lee in himself is very inexperienced. So it's it's going to be a yes. difficult. But I don't want to go down that road, Damon. To be quite honest, no. I think no, no, Stephen no, Kenny. No, no, I, no. I think Stephen Kenny deserves the time or will have the time to see how this group pans out, you know? Yes. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't finish third, uh, I think he's gone, Eamon, to be quite honest. If he doesn't okay. finish above the Greek team, I think he's gone. 
Uh, and we'll probably be looking at the likes of Lee Carsley, maybe Chris Uton, maybe maybe other names that are going to pop up, you know. Let me talk to you about something that really seems uh, very positive, and that is Evan Ferguson, Liam. I think he's an outsider. His family, our football family. Yeah, St. Kevin's boy. Yeah, yeah, from the same club as you. Yeah, I think Bohemians are getting Bohemians are getting a bit of credit for his development, but I think if you look at his facts, I think he spent over yeah. ten years or nearly ten years at St. Kevin's from when he was a little boy. You know, and St. Kevin's have a really good record. Yes. Of, they're one of the best schoolboy clubs around. You know, and uh, and he's yes. another one that's come through. Uh, the 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 pipeline. I, I think John Delaney uh, was trying to, I don't know, uh, m- maybe appease uh, some of the League of Ireland clubs. So he made it obligatory that these kids would have to leave the schoolboy clubs and go to League of Ireland clubs. And I think Evan yeah. Ferguson did, did that like when that. he was fourteen. Yeah, and you know, it's it's yeah, all very well, yeah. it's all very well creating that rule, but uh, some of the League of Ireland clubs don't have the have the uh, the infrastructure uh, as as good no. as the likes of St Kevin's or St Joseph's out in Sally and no, things like that. No, absolutely, and they don't have the people. Yeah, uh, but this is something that the new the new regime in the FAI have to address, Eamon, and and see see where, where they can improve things. But to go back to Young Ferguson, yeah, he's a really good player, and he actually plays a lot better for Brighton. I've seen the last two Irish games; he plays, plays a lot better for Brighton simply because he's playing with better players. Yes, yeah, and he is a real prospect. There's another player that I like, and I don't think you or John are very keen on. Adamida has been very unlucky with injuries. He got his goal the other night, uh, Liam, before he was uh, substituted. I think he's a very good centre-forward. I think he's got a chance, but... He's been dogged by injuries and he's playing in an Irish team that was getting hockeyed in the Premier League every week, you know, when he was in, uh, when he was out. The last thing I want to ask you about is this. You mentioned your night on your last appearance on RTE, your sort of, and it's something I share, your dismay is probably the word at the way football is, has gone, the game itself the corruption in it, the greed in it, and the fact that it has, I know how deeply you love it and all your family were deeply involved, pros, two of them, and Irish internationals indeed. This game needs to change, Liam, doesn't it? Yeah, but I don't see where it's going to change, Eamon. I don't see how it's going to happen. It's just become a monthly, multi-billion pound or euro or dollar business hasn't it it's crazy yes. crazy stuff yes and yeah I, i'm actually dismayed i don't i don't read the newspapers or about it I, I you know i when we're doing the podcast from week to week i try yes. and catch up on what's going on with the in the politics of the game and things like that but yeah. I, I am really fed up reading about these you know saudi arabians putting money I, it came out yesterday that they're they're back in they're back in Chelsea, all that money yes. that Chelsea have spent. Yes. The yes. Saudis are behind it. You know yeah. what I mean? They're in, yes. they're in Newcastle. The Qataris want to buy Manchester United. Yes. Abu Dhabi on, on Manchester City. Uh, I just don't know. And I heard the guy from Manchester City. Did you hear him on the... Uh, I can't remember his name, but he's the chairman. He's the spokesman. He's not yeah. the owner as such, but... Oh, I um, know the guy, yeah. I don't yeah, know. I can't remember his name. Man- yeah. Mansour. It might be Mansour. Sheikh, but, uh, no, Sheikh Mansour owns it. He's, he bought it. He's, he went to the first match in under his thing in 2008, and the second time he saw them was in the Champions League final. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. he has a guy well, who talks for him. Yeah, that, and that's the person I'm referring to. Uh, his name is Khaldun Al Mubarak. Okay, he's yeah, the that's chairman. The guy I was he's the, the, guy the chairman. Was, yeah, and he was doing an in-house Manchester City uh, interview. You know, he wasn't being asked any questions from the uh, from the press. No. He, he was he was able to say what he wanted to say without yeah. anybody asking. Manchester City to TV, go. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it was about the 115 charges. You know, they mentioned yes. it as a, as a diluted uh, 
Yeah, and he said no. He came out and said no. We haven't done anything wrong, and so but they're paying. We know the behind the scenes. They're paying millions and millions and millions of yes. of legal fees to to try and stop you know these allegations from really really coming into the public domain. Um, One of the allegations is that they paid Mancini when he was there twice. Once over the table and once under the table. Well, they seem to have a lot of evidence that, but yeah. you know, they're, they're being stopped in the tracks. The Premier League is being stopped yes. in the tracks, and let's let's not uh, forget that they had to pay UEFA a hefty fine. It wasn't as hefty as UEFA wanted it to be because they, I, I think, they got their legal team onto UEFA yeah. as well. So, but uh, I'm not, I'm not just pointing the finger at Manchester City. I mean, it's it, this is the kind of stuff that. Um, it's, it's kind of put me off the game, and it's, yes. I don't love it as much as I, I, do, uh, I did. I, I, I love watching it. I still love watching the top games yeah. and the top players, and being able to yes. compare them to what we've seen before. And some matches are great. Like the Premier League is a great product. Yes. You have to say that, you know. So uh, I will be watching games, but uh, I've really no interest in buying a newspaper and reading it. Yeah. You know, all the all the soccer section because it's all about. Who owns this and who owns that and who's going to spend this and who owns, you yeah. know. And just a final <laughs> bit of news for you, if you didn't know it already. N'Golo Kante, who's a player we both, I think, and John admire greatly. He's gone to the Saudis for the few yeah. above. It's yeah, rather well, sad, isn't it? Yeah, it is sad. It is sad. Money, they say money corrupts and, and, and it does in this situation. You know, yeah. lads are going over there to play for ridiculous amounts of money and they know they're going to be playing in a Mickey Mouse football. Yeah. And uh well that that kind of sums sums up why I've lost the uh, I've lost uh, the the a lot of the love for it, Eamon. Okay, well everyone in the country admires you and always always has every football person and many, many people who have no interest in football at all, as you well know, uh, some of them are friends of yours outside of the game and great respect everybody has for you. So we're grateful to you, of course. Well, it's been a good season, I mean, hasn't it? Yeah. it has been a great season. Yeah. Manchester City's, you know, getting Arsenal back. I was getting excited for yeah, yeah. a long well, time with Arsenal and they, they, you know, they really did make a fight of it. The only club to make a fight of it, to be quite honest. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be interesting next year now with Liverpool. Will they come back? Uh, will Chelsea do better with all the money they've spent? Yeah. Will Newcastle improve? What will happen at Manchester United? Uh, the, the 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 soap opera continues. <laughs> okay, then with that perfect encapsulation of what's going on, we say thank you very much for all the work you've done with us. I understand it's hugely, yeah, it's hugely have appreciated. A, have a great summer, Eamon, yeah, and have a, and great, a great summer, a great summer to all our listeners. Okay, thank you very much, Liam. Take care of yourself. Back a few winners at Ascot. <laughs> okay. If Talk I do as well as I did yesterday, I'll be happy. Okay, Liam, thank you very much <laughs> indeed. We're grateful to Liam.